without Sachem C. Lord Isaiah, Rabbi T. Messiah. Um, I thought since I have this new channel, Messiah Pipe, because I have other channels on YouTube, three, three, four, five more other channels, and they, I don't have many subscribers, but I've got a lot of videos, hundreds of videos. But this channel has a purpose and a directive, so I'm going to try to keep everything similar in one place. I don't want to pervert this channel or taint this channel with any kind of different materials, so I thought it'd be a good idea to start with a with a, the decent length video of something tangible that actually means something that's you know consistent with the theme here. So, without further ado, I'm introducing the first video of any real length to you, and that's this one, which is. Well, I guess we'll just call it right here, right now, before I even title it, which I guess you're supposed to really title a video and put a thumbnail before you even make the video. At least I just learned that on some video on YouTube yesterday or something. But anyways, uh, this video for now is called All the Scripture in the Bible about Melchizedek. And it's not that much. And as a matter of fact, it's only five chapters. But in that five chapters, not every verse is about Melchizedek. But it sets the tone and it allows you to see kind of where it all comes from. And I'll even do a little bit of a little bit of commentary, a little bit of commentary, some uh, prism shining so we can clear some things up here. For example, uh, you see down here in verse two, uh, the second line from the bottom, that name right there, Shem Eber. I guess most people reading this would not know. But if you know who Shem is, that's one of the sons of Noah, who is actually the ancestor of the Hebrews, uh, had a son named Eber, so Shem Eber. Eber um, is where the name Hebrew comes from, Eber Hebrew. That's what it is. But anyways, uh, so make a long story short, I'm going to start reading, and uh, if I don't even give any commentary, you know, maybe I'll just talk first, because um, Melchizedek is what this is all about. Melchizedek, which is king of peace, king of Salem, uh, in Arabic or in Islam or, as a matter of fact, uh, Ismaili tradition, uh, it is actually Malik Salam, King of Peace. Or even in Hebrew, it's Malik Shalem. So Jerusalem, Malik Shalem, King of Peace. So who is Mel who is Melchizedek? Melchizedek is, as a matter of fact, the first coming of Messiah. There's lots of scripture written about Jesus being a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And the order of Melchizedek is the order of a priesthood that is not taught or tutored by man. No one had to teach it to him. He did not make an oath to become a priest. Or sorry, that's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say is he was not placed in a position of priesthood by inheritance, therefore foregoing any oath. Um, but God made an oath with Melchizedek as well as with Jesus. Also, it, it needs to be said that the return of Christ, which is people call the second coming of Christ, which is really the third coming of Messiah, uh, would be also Melchizedek, the same order. So... Without further ado, I guess I'll just start reading the scripture. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, adding a footnote, who is Nimrod, Arioch, king of Alasar, Chedorlomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. And these were joined together in the Vale of Sidon, which is in the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chedorlomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Chedorlomer, and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephaims in Ashtaroth Karnaim, and the Zuzims in Ham, and the Emims in Shavak Kirathim, and the Horites in the Mount Seir, and unto unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to En Mishfat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites, also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazazon, Tamar. And there went out of King 
And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Admah, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the same as Zoar. And they joined battle with them in the vale of Sidon. With Chedalomar, the king of Elam, and with Tidal, king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elassar, four kings with five. And the vale of Sodom was full of slime pits. And the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, and dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and the brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. Forgive my reading, stumbling in my voice, I don't always do it, and it's probably something nutritional. But anyways, continuing on. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued, it, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Or, and pursued them unto Hoba, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the kingdom and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shave, Shava, which is in the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. The king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham, and Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. So, something to be noticed in this chapter, chapter 14 of Genesis, is that right here in verse, or chapter, verse 20, you see in the bottom of the very last line, the very last line and he gave him tithes of all. But it doesn't specify whether Melchizedek gave Abraham tithes or Abraham gave Melchizedek tithes. And scholars debate both sides, really. Um, what do I think? Well, it's hard to say. Because it would make sense that Abram gave Melchizedek tithes of all the spoils, but he did not take any spoils. Abram was already rich, right? So not only was Abram already rich, if Melchizedek gave Abram wine and bread and a tenth of all that he had, because it's also said that Abram, this is where Abram got his name Abram Ham, when God gave Abram the hay, the H, to add to his name, because it was a special part of God. But... Um, anyways, there it stands. It would make sense that Abraham gave ties to uh, Melchizedek because Melchizedek was uh, Messiah. But it would also make sense that Messiah, having all that he had, was pleased, just fine, happy to give to Abraham a tenth of all that he had. Therefore, Abraham, from that point on, always gave a tenth of all things. As it's said in the New Testament, that Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, or Levi gave tithes to, El to Melchizedek while he was still in Abraham's loins. So, other than that, um, there's a lot of details, a lot of things written about this chapter online, because, well, a lot of people want to know who Melchizedek is, but, well, you know, this is one of those chapters that everybody references. So, the next chapter I'm going to bring up of Melchizedek does not mention Melchizedek, um, 
nor if you look online are you going to easily find it as a reference for Melchizedek, but I'm going to explain to you right now why it is Melchizedek. And that chapter is Genesis chapter 18. You see, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the door of the tent in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. See, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. See, in English, we use the word Lord, but the original word in Hebrew is a little more telling, because you're probably not going to guess what it actually says there in Lord, which is not the same as what it says in verse 3 here, my Lord. So I'll show you in the Strong's Concordance. Excellent Bible reference tool, by the way. It's all the translated, it's all the words translated from the original language. See, H stands for Hebrew. You go to the New Testament, you get G. But in Genesis 18, let's see here, I'll show you how it works by demonstration. Genesis 18, verse 1. And the Lord, H3068. Click on that. H3068. Yehovah, Y H V H, Yud He Vav He. Yehovah, Jehovah. So Jehovah appeared to Abram in the plains of Mamre. And he looked and he saw three men. So, and he said, my Lord, H136. Not the same as H3068. See, the Lord is used for two different things here. So he's speaking to a man. He's even asking him to come and sit down under a tree. It's the same Lord that appeared to him when he's in the tent door, so we know that's the same. So who is this here? Adonai. Jehovah came down to be a man who was Lord on earth, who was Messiah, called Adonai. See, use proper the name of God only, my Lord. That's Messiah. That's Melchizedek. That's the order of Melchizedek. But nobody seems to use this as an explanation for Melchizedek. So now that we've explained that, we'll probably smooth through the rest of the scriptures a little quicker. But, uh, okay, here we go. There's more information here, actually. It says, I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And he said, So do as thou hast said. And Abram hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quick three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and hastened to dress it. And he took, better, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and he set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And he said unto him, Where is, thy, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. He said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? saying, Shall I of surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. See, let's see here. Let's go, let's go back to where it says Lord, here in verse 14 in the Strong's Concordance. I think when Melchizedek, who is speaking with Abram in the face, is referring to himself as Lord, I have a feeling it's H3068 which is Jehovah. Let's see. Yeah. Is anything too hard for the Lord? When I return to you. Sh you. Ship. Wow, it's used a lot. I ain't going to even read through that right now. Anyways. 14. Okay. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. 
And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abram went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abram that thing which I do, seeing that Abram shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that, I will that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the ways of the Lord. They shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, and that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come up unto which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous, wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If there if I find there fifty or if I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall be thirty, there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it for th do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be found twenty there. There shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left, communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. So there's only one more reference to be noted, really, or one that I'm presently aware of in the Old Testament to Melchizedek, and that is Psalm 110.1. See, no, oh, look at that, I picked the wrong one. Psalm 110, sorry, Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the days of it, in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head.